after 4.30. And um, our first meeting is with our uh, friends who are representatives from the Tifton Housing Authority, which we very much appreciate you being here with us today. We have started, um, the council has been um, meeting with all the various boards. We have many boards and commissions and authorities that we interact with, that we work with, that we appoint members to. And um, we have um, some of us, um, uh, for example, Councilman Terrell's been on the council for what, 62 years or a long time, maybe? I'm going up to 71. 71 years, yeah. a long time. <laughs> and then we have some, I'm being silly, but we have some newer council oh, members. So oh, we just want to make sure I'm that- I've been eight years. Yeah. Eight <laughs> years. <laughs> Um, we just want to make sure that everyone on the council and all understands what all, all of our various boards do and to give you a chance to, to meet all of us if you haven't met all of us. And then how can we be good stewards and good partners in whatever the mission of your particular board is. And so we appreciate all of you being here today. So we have until about 5.30, at which, no, about 5 o'clock, it's 5, 5.30. 5.30 we'll have the yeah. public hearing. And uh, so if y'all want to, to Move your come up to the front row here, or kind of pull your chairs up, whatever. Where it's all very friendly. We would come down to you, but we have these screens that we can't move, unfortunately. Otherwise, we'd all sit around the table together. So uh, that being said, you know, I'll turn it over to you if you want to kind of get things started. Council, um, thank you to all the, the board members for coming in and just uh, talking, having a conversation. One of the, like the mayor said, one of the things that we wanted to do uh, this particular year is just to meet and talk through uh, the bylaws, who's serving, uh, some of the uh, ins and outs of your board, where the funding comes from, how we can partner better together, how we can collaborate better. And I don't know if this was ever done, so the mayor and council asked me to be out on it. Thank you for providing a couple things we've never seen in bylaws. And th this afternoon, if, if we can, I just put a couple things together, just the bylaws. Like I said, Section 7 is particularly important about the election of appointment. And uh, Council, you, I, I did give you a, an updated mm -hmm. copy of the board itself. Okay. So, so we can kind of look at that. Um, the current board members and the original appointment date, that's, that's, I don't have anything reaching back uh, very long, so we'll probably need your help with that. Uh, policy versus administration. And if there's a place, or if there's a, current condition of properties, we wanted to go through just what we're seeing um, as we start ramping up with code enforcement, uh, as we're talking about <coughs> development plans, as we're talking about cleaning up certain areas. We have to be a part uh, with this, absolutely. And that is one of their goals this particular year. So please understand, this is just a, really a conversation, a chance for us to have a conversation. This is not to say, hey, this is what you're doing bad, because you can probably, you can probably point the finger at us just to say that. So, and then lastly, I think the mayor would kind of give you a, uh, an overview of our, our redevelopment plans right in the particular neighborhoods uh, that we're, uh, we're talking about. So with that, so if we could uh, just uh, turn to that section seven, the mayor and council, if, um, if you want to go through election of appointments, um, maybe Dr. Dave has a, do you have any knowledge on, on the appointments, on how this, um, how this works? Um, well, I have. You can do one thing and let him, you can appoint him, but after you appoint 
So just in the bylaws, page two, uh, I just want to just point out the third paragraph where it says the commissioners of the authority shall be, be appointed by the mayor and the city of Tifton in accordance with the law of the state of Georgia and shall hold office for five years or until their successor is appointed. So I just want to make sure you knew that. That's one of the things we talked about. And then if you, you want, uh, maybe uh, Sandra could go through the housing authority board members because I don't have the data that this five term, five years, I don't have anything before that. So I don't know how many years uh, each of you have been serving, so that would be helpful. Is that something that you'd like to, to know? As far as how many years they've been? Yes, yeah, I'd like to know that. Okay, Sandra, can you talk about that? Uh, they can help with that. Uh, Dr. Day, I know, has been serving since 1992. Mr. Van Wesley, we came on in 2001. Uh, Mr. Willis just came on. Again, good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone, because it's not 6 o'clock yet. 
Um, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to come before you this evening. And I'm going to just give you a brief overview of the Housing Authority, the number of units uh, that we have, and a little bit about what we're doing and where we're going. And if you have some questions, please, please feel free to ask. Um, but let me start off by what you just asked about policy versus uh, administration. Typically, the, the board sets policy, but there are some things that come from HUD. Mm -hmm. Okay, case in point, right now uh, we're getting ready to do our smoke-free impl uh, implementation. That has to be done by July the 31st. And so what we started doing last year was, okay, this came from HUD. We started talking to the residents about it last May that this is going to be policy, that you will not be allowed to smoke within 25 feet of any public housing authority property. And the same thing goes for employees. You can't smoke in vehicles, that kind of thing. So what I did was take, took the um, information from HUD, the requirements, and put it into a policy. I presented it to the board and for them to vote on it and for our attorney to look at it and make sure it follows all the guidelines. Uh, so that's kind of an example of how we do policy and administration. Now, what happens is once the board approves it, we send it to the residents. We're going to have resident meetings, I believe the fourth week of this month, concerning smoke-free implementation, and then we're going to offer them opportunities for smoking cessation classes, things like that. And um, then we will uh, make sure all the leases are updated and it takes effect first of August. So what so, happens if you catch them smoking? Uh, there are some uh, requirements. The first time you get a warning, the second time, there's a $100 charge. The third time, there's a $200 fee. And the fourth time, it is uh, eviction. However, that's only in a 12-month period. So if you do it three times this year, and not, a, you know, not again within that 12-month period, and again, these are HUD's rules, not ours. So um, after that 12-month after that period, they start over. You get another warning and so forth. That's, does that answer your question? Okay. Okay. So just a little bit about the Housing Authority. The Housing Authority was established in 1950. Okay. The very first development, which was Peterson, opened in 1952. And I believe I sent you uh, some information on that, so you may have that information with you. We have uh, 339 units. We used to have 383 units, but what you know is these is no longer public housing. It is now a multi-family multi uh, property. And that means it's just still under HUD, still have guidelines, but it's a different funding stream, okay? Different, it's a little bit easier to manage, okay? So again, we have 339 units, 10 developments. Two of those developments are in Omega. We have 24 units down there. We have 16 employees that are full-time, and they are administrative employees. We have housing employees, maintenance, and resident services. We have one employee in resident services. Now, our sources of funding come from rental income, uh, which you have a copy of our budget, so you'll know that uh, we estimated about $440,000 for rental income. Operating subsidy, now, that's a little bit different. We estimated, we never know what we're going to get. We estimated at $1.14 million this year in that budget. However, when the president uh, signed the new budget, we got a 10% increase. So we may get a little bit more. However, there is talk of a rescission. So we may not get that. We don't know. I've had three different funding amounts this year already. We get funded on a monthly basis. Is that come, does that come from HUD, directly from yes. HUD? Yes, okay. de directly okay. from HUD, yes. Okay. And we, we had an amount for January and February, March and April, and we have a different amount for May. So um, our another funding source is capital fund. Last year we got $511,000. This year, we have not received the amount yet. We don't know yet. Where, Typically, where does that come from? It comes from HUD also. That comes from yes, HUD well. but capital fund is strictly for fund, uh, capital projects, major issues. And I'll get to a little bit more about what we're doing with that in just a few minutes. We also get management fees from managing um, THP, well, these for THP. We have a management contract. So our total economic impact is around $2.17 million. Now, just some statistics about the Housing Authority. We have 825 occupants in public housing, and that's all of our family members. We have 113 in the multifamily side, so we have a total of 930 
uh, members. The average age is 40. The average residency period, which is a question I get all the time, how long do people stay? Uh, families typically stay about 6.2 years, a little over six years. The elderly typically stay more. They stay about eight and a half years. And that is because most of the time our elderly come to us, they are, they are not going to be anywhere else. They're gonna leave from us and go stay with children. They're gonna leave from the, us and maybe go to a nursing home or unfortunately some pass away. So that's uh, with elderly. Our income sources, child support, wages, SSI, Social Security, and what we call contributions. That is, you may not have income, but somehow your electricity is getting paid, so somebody's paying it for you, and we, we count that, okay? Average rent is $108. Our monthly rent roll is 36000 Now, how do you determine whether residents are eligible? They have to make less than 80% of median income, which is uh, the area median income is 49.9. So they have to have less than that, um, uh, 80, less than 80% of that. Now, 40% have to have less than 30% of that. Okay, 40% of our new admissions must be less than 30% of area median income, median income, and that's what family of four. And we get a little chart that lists it out for up to eight family members, so it, it varies. Um, we do a criminal background check, we do a credit check, but we don't check for credit, we're checking for dispossessories and evictions, disposed primarily, uh, and writs of uh, disposition. We uh, also have landlord verification, and we have what's called the Employment Income Verification System, EIV, and it's where we type in their social security numbers, and it comes back to us if they're working uh, to make sure we have the correct information because we submit some information, say we submit something that says the resident is not working, but they have something different, then we have to go back to the resident and say, hey, you didn't report this. And if in fact they are working, then we have to charge them retro rent. You have to pay us back for what, uh, what you didn't pay initially. We also have what's called the Public Information Center, which is what we call PIC. You, we submit all of our information on a monthly basis into that system to HUD, go straight to HUD. And if, some, if they're occupying another unit somewhere else, or if they owe somebody else money, they have to pay before we can admit them. They have to pay the other housing authority or the other assisted facility. Okay, some of the programs that we have. We have our summer literacy program that serves K through three. We work with the YMCA on their food for thought program. Uh, they come every day during the year um, well, Monday through Friday, and then they have different sites during the summer. I think they operate at Peterson, they operate at uh, Dixie Avenue Golden, which is behind 8th Street Middle School. Also operate at Bellevue. Let's see, we have, uh, they, we work with Urban Elevation, which is at the Methodist Church. It's a boys program. We have a program called Guys to Gentlemen, in which the young men, uh, they learn how to tie ties, they learn how to uh, approach people. It's an etiquette class, really for young men. And we have career-oriented programs. We ask uh, folks to come in and talk to them about their careers. You know, and sometimes the kids have specific people. Like one time we had a kid that wanted to be a weatherman. Uh, uh, and so we called up Fox and they sent a weather person over to talk to the kids. This has been years ago, but that's the kind of thing that we, uh, we do. We have our senior activities. Every month uh, the seniors play bingo. And then during holidays we do special things for those holidays. Fourth of July, we have a celebration, uh, Thanksgiving, you know, just for social reasons so that they can get out, you know, get out of the apartment. We have a resident advisory council. Now, it's not active right now because we are, we don't have anyone in that position. In fact, she starts tomorrow, our new resident services and community outreach, outreach manager. So when she comes, uh, she'll get the resident council activated again. And what they do is meet and they give us input from what they're seeing on the property. So that when we get ready to do capital fund, we can incorporate their thoughts into capital fund. You know, if they're noticing major problems with certain things, they let us know what they see. And then How we- How is that set up? Is it like a, a, a representative from each property yes. that serves on that council? That's correct. Okay. That is correct. Uh, we have, um, each summer, our youth participate in the Youth Leadership Conference, and that is where we send 10 kids, and they do resume writing, they do how to dress for success, they do um, the ramifications of sexting, 
all that kind of stuff, things that can help them be successful adults. Then we also have a resident leadership conference and where the adults, typically the resident council, they go to classes just like the kids do. It's just more geared for adults. Now, uh, rent determination, uh, we have minimum rent of $50. Uh, but we have also have what's called flat rent. Two years ago, no, it's been longer than, it's been about five years ago, um, the Obama administration indicated that flat rent, which is the top rent that you can pay, has to be 80% of the fair market rent for that area. Okay, so let, let me just give you an example. If um, fair market rent for a five bedroom is $1,000 in Tiff County, resident on flat rent has to pay at least 800 Okay, that's, that's the requirement if they're on flat rent. The other opportunity, uh, the other choice is 30% of adjusted income. And adjusted means that you have deducted for children, you've deducted for medical expenses if it's more than, uh, I believe, 3% of your total income. Uh, and there's some other adjustment if you're a senior or if you're disabled for that. Or they can pay 10% of gross, okay? And all of our residents are either on flat rent or 30% of adjusted. Nobody wants to do 10% gross. Uh, and so their total tenant payment is that tenant uh, is the rent less utilities because each apartment is assigned a utility allowance and it may be $150 and it includes an allowance for gas, for electricity, for whatever those utilities are in that apartment and that is subtracted. So if your rent is calculated at $300, and your utility allowance is 150 for that apartment, then you pay us $150. That's how that works. Um, our monitoring mechanisms, HUD does monitor us, just like any other organization. We have what's called our public housing assessment system. Right now, we are a high performer. We, our score is 93. And what they score is your physical, they, come, they send a third party contractor down to go through a sample of our units. We have our capital fund score, that is that uh, capital fund grant that I spoke to you about. Are we obligating it? Are we expending it timely? Are we expending it the way we're supposed to? We have a financial score also, and that is are we managing our money? Do we have proper reserves? Because we have to maintain X amount of dollars in our reserves. And then we have the management score, which talk, deals with uh, rent and re-exams. Well, and re-exams are when uh, residents have to come in and recertify that they're, they're eligible. We also have independent audits annually, have to have an audit. Um, also HUD, I mentioned earlier the PIC system, HUD goes in and monitors us through that PIC system also. And you can have HUD on-site reviews. We've not had one, I've been through one before at another housing authority, but we've not had one here. However, we have had desk reviews. That's where they call you and just ask you to send all the documentation to them rather than them coming on site. Now, some of the major issues facing us are aging properties. Our I'd like to yeah. thank you for that. I'd like to speak to some of the things that you do as far as working with the kids and also include the things that you do as far as the literacy programs as far as reading programs as far as classes here in Memphis. Right. We do. I did not mention the read aloud program. We have a certified teacher, uh, come, well, we have a, yeah, she's a certified teacher, come in and help our children improve their reading skills. Because we know that if you read well by um, grade three, you are more likely to be successful in college. Uh, and so we want our kids to be able to read. We want them, our goal, and I didn't mention our mission to you. Uh, our mission is uh, the Tifton Housing Authority is committed to achieving excellence in providing safe, clean, and modern housing while promoting self-sufficiency and upward mobility to its residents. And my goal is to help folks move in, move up, and move out. Okay, we don't want you to stay in public housing forever. And that's why we do the children's programs, so that they know that there is something else, that they can move forward. They don't have to be in public housing forever. How that, often are those kind of programs? I know that like the YMCA summer program obviously is in the summer. But the, like the read aloud and some of the others, are those weekly or monthly? How they are weekly. Okay. Um, and sometimes we do twice a week, mm -hmm. um, but most of them are weekly. Okay. Yes, we have something four days a week for the kids, maybe a different program. I think Mondays we do read aloud. We also have, uh, we noticed some of the kids were having issues with conflict resolution, so we hired a counselor to 
to come in and talk with the kids and work with them on team building, conflict resolution, uh, self-esteem, those types of things. Uh, we do that. Uh, that's on Tuesdays. We have Urban Elevation on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Wednesdays, uh, we have the career, uh, the career thing. They go on field trips. They have speakers come in. And also on, I think we have something else on Thursday. Well, it's, we have the Food for Thought. Uh, all, they actually come in on Friday. We don't do any programs out of the office on Friday because we work from 8 to 6 on Monday through Thursday and 8 to 12 on Friday, so we're not there. And the it's, attendance is good? You get good participation from everybody? Uh, for some of them. Uh -huh. Sometimes, like they love Urban Elevation and they love Guys to Gents. Mm -hmm. And so in the summertime, we have lots of kids in the, K, in the summer literacy program. They, we also do plight. Uh, we, tr we make sure they're transported. We're not actually doing the program. We make sure they get to and from. And yes, they do. They participate. Yeah. Um, in years past, we've had waiting lists for kids to get into programs. Chandra, you mentioned yes. a lot of uh, children's programs. What do you have for the adults? Do you have like financial literacy or anything like that? Yes, we have done financial literacy two or three times. That is a little bit, it's a little bit more difficult to get the adults involved because 90% of our residents who are eligible to work do work. And so we just have a, a small percentage that don't work. And so it's hard to get them into those programs. But we typically do. Uh, we do standalone programs. We've done financial literacy. We've done nutrition. Uh, let's see, what else have we done? Parenting. Those types of things, yes. But they're typically, you know, if we do a parenting program, it may be a six-week curriculum. Um, uh, let's see, what else have we done? If we do nutrition, it may be, I don't know, once a month for two or three months, that kind of thing. But it's not as often, just because it's a little bit harder to get those adults in. And then we had the GED program, but we had to close it down due to lack of participation. But what we have done is said, okay, we understand you don't want to go here. We will transport you out to Moultrie Tech if you want to participate in the program. And we pay for the, the tests for our residents. Okay, any more questions? No, right. keep going. Okay. Okay, um, I was discussing the major issues facing the Housing Authority, the aging properties, of course, the reduction in funding. Now, this year, we got an increase, uh, but we don't know what's gonna happen next year. We'll see, because our money is directly based on the administration that's in the White House uh, and Congress, so we'll see. Um, the other couple things, we have, Housing the mentally ill, as you know, as I'm sure you know, many of the mentally ill facilities have been closed down. And so we're housing uh, folks. And we don't really have, we're not social workers, but we try to make sure our residents have access to whatever they need uh, because it's, it's in the best interest of all the residents. Um, so that's one of the things that we're facing. We're trying to figure out how do we address, make sure their needs are met. How, what, what do we do? So, you know, we have training sessions on that. How do I identify different, different problems that we see? And who do we send them to when we have it? Who do we need to call? Uh, another major issue, just like uh, Dr. Day mentioned earlier, bed bugs. Last year we had 55 cases of bed bugs. That is a major issue. And it costs from anywhere from 600 to 1,150 to treat a unit. And sometimes we have to double treat. Uh, if, you know, we have a protocol, just like you said, the gentleman called uh, WAOB today. <laughs> anyway, but the issue is there's a, protocol, there's a procedure. You have to pack up all your stuff. You have to clean out all your cabinets, clean out all your drawers. You have to strip down your beds. Uh, and we put it in now for, if we're doing it in-house, we have to put it in a hot box, heat it up. It's just not a day process. It takes two or three days to get ready for it. Uh, and I think in some cases that might not be well understood, but that's what we have. So that's one of the major issues we're facing. We, we spend a lot of money on bed bugs. Now, our plans for the future. We just, with you know, I mentioned that we had this uh, property that we just switched to multifamily, these. We're trying to evaluate now if we want to do other properties like that because it's turning out to be a good program and we like it. The thing is you have to have everything up to code. The reason we were able to do these that way is because we had gone through a four-year renovation of that property. We spent about 
$2.8 million to renovate that pro property over the course of four years. And so we're trying to see if we are able to do that with other properties. Uh, so that's one of the things we're trying to evaluate. We are getting ready, also after we finish Old Omega Road, right now we're in the process of, we've signed a contract to renovate all the kitchens and bathrooms at that property. And that contract is $580,000. And, and that was at which property again? Old Omega Road, Old Omega. yes. Mm -hmm. So after we leave that property, we didn't think we were gonna be able to do it all in one year, but we're gonna be able to do the entire property in one year. So that means we can go to something else earlier. Um, and our next project was going to Bellevue and Maple to do the same thing. Uh, the kitchens and bathrooms have not been renovated there in, since I was here for sure, since I got here for sure. So uh, we're trying to do that. We have included in our five-year plan a camera system for our properties where it's needed because we realized there are some security issues on some of our properties. And so we, we tried it once before, but the cost was just so outrageous, we could not afford it. And we understand that the, pro the cost has dramatically decreased, so we're taking another look at that because that does make a difference. We want to upgrade the exterior to Old Omega Road. And then um, another thing that's on the horizon, HVA, all of our HVAC systems that still have Freon are gonna be, have to be changed out um, in the next few years. So that's gonna be a huge expense because all of our properties have central air and heat. So we gotta change all that out. And uh, that's where we are, that's our plans for the future. Our current issues that we're facing, rent reform, I'm sure you've seen that on the news, that um, the Secretary Ben Carson has issued an, um, a bill, well through Congress, to change the way we calculate rent. And so that's, that's gonna be a major thing. That's gonna be major. We have our Strong Families Initiative coming up with HUD, that's this summer. It has been the fatherhood initiative in previous years. We wanted us to you know, do programs to emphasize fatherhood. And so now they've changed it to emphasize families. We'll be looking at doing that. And of course, I mentioned the contract that uh, at Old Omega Road with Bent Pine Construction. Now I mentioned we had a um, the nonprofit, and the goals, of, and that's Tipton Housing Partners, and that nonprofit, the goals of that are rehabilitation of affordable housing, <coughs> development of affordable housing, home ownership counseling, and resident services. Okay, that's my presentation. You have any questions? That's a lot of info. Okay. What's all that? It's good. Let's just digest that, which is really, really good. I'm just curious, how often do you and the board members visit the various properties? I go to the properties about once a month uh, on the weekend. I may not go to all of them at the same time, but I try to at least ride, a, ride through just to take a look and see what's going on. And I think that's one of the biggest, I guess, questions we have. And again, we wanted to, to illustrate when we talk about conditions of property. And again, we're not here to point any fingers, but we want to know how we could help or maybe there is an explanation or is there something else that could be done. And um, I, I just want to show a couple because they're really, very, very, they stand out. Whether it's, you know, mattresses or whether it's a, on the one on the left there was a fire and it's being redone. So if that's policy on how, how we <coughs> fix, you know, we do that. Um, I can address that. Yeah, okay. Okay, <coughs> with the, the two units on Alder Street, that's been a very long process. It took us about six to eight months to deal with the issue. Yes, I will. Just real quickly, Sandra, it's, it's really, I think we're just trying to figure out you know, what is happening and some of the things that you go through, where, where we can expect. Okay, with that property, with uh, Alder Street, those are 701 and 703 Alder Street, and if you're not familiar with it, we had those units burned, and they were burned, damaged beyond repair. We went back and forth with the insurance company because the insurance company didn't want to give us the maximum amount uh, because we have to tear them down. Anyway, so we had to submit a special application uh, to the Special Application Center in Chicago. We've done that. They instructed us that we had to have an environmental assessment from the field office. Well, contacted the field office, they have completed it, and so we have to resubmit, and it, is be it has been resubmitted. Okay. Uh, so hopefully, and I asked could I go ahead and tear down the property, and I couldn't get it in writing. And um, as you know, if, it did, if it's not in writing, it didn't happen. 
So I didn't want to tear it down until they put it in writing that we could demolish the property. So hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll have that torn down. Okay. All right, good. Um, and again, we're, we're looking at it. If, if we can help with law enforcement, we will do so. Like the car on the left, um, this is Johnny, that's two months maybe? Yeah. Uh, so if it's on the street and it doesn't move, and mm -hmm. if the tags are expired or if it's creating a blocking uh, for you know, other parking, want us to look at that? Is there something you could tell us? If you can give us something saying that we, we told them, what we do is eventually told them, but we get a lot of, they call HUD, you know, we, we get some blowback when we talk about towing. Uh, but if you all can write a citation for it, we can go ahead and get it towed, it's not a problem. And I, on the, you mentioned the mattresses. Um, I think I spoke with you, Mr. Terrell, once before um, about that, because that was one of your concerns, I believe. During the tax season, you will see more mattresses and more furniture on the side of the street because people are buying new furniture. You will, you will definitely see it. But we try to go through and get it all up okay. um, as, as soon as possible. Yeah, the yard with, with all the white, white appliances, uh, refrigerators and stoves. Now, that's the, where, that, that's the warehouse, I think, right there. I think so. Let's see. Yeah, that is uh, it's, it's where all the refrigeration is called. Yes. The white goods just yes. are stored. And, that has to be written off, so we have to go through a board process to take those off of inventory. So it's not a, we can't just throw them away until the board votes on it. And what they like to do is collect quite a few, and then we write them all off at one time and then take them to the landfill. Plus you count a lot of them, right? Yes, yeah. we do. Okay. So what, what does that? How long, how long, how long, yeah. but how long do they sit? I mean, I, I realize you want to accumulate, but it's, you know, you accumulate 10 or 20 or 100. No, it's not a it's not a set number. We do it about every three or four months. Because the board only meets once a month. So we have to wait until the bo board meets. Would you like us to do them once a month? Well, I mean, it, no, no. We're, we're it's just kind of a tight. We're trying to eliminate yeah. eyesore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so do you want to, you know, that, that's the issue. I mean, yeah. you know, we it, can certainly do it more often. We can certainly. To avoid having. We're trying to clean things up. Yeah. That's and I'm, I I understand completely. Not a problem. In fact, we have them on. They'll be on our board meeting for Thursday night. We'll have some to get, get taken off the books then. Miss Clark. Yes. Uh, uh, what 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 I, this board would like for you? If there's anything that we can do to help you, right? We we want we want to we want to do anything that you need us to do to help you. I, let me tell you, one thing that really was great was when your code enforcement officer started writing tickets for trash in yards. Uh -huh. That is awesome. Okay. That's, that's awesome. Okay, um, that. Yeah, we got that. Because that makes, because once, because what we did was went out and talked about it. Okay, letting folks know you're going to get charged $250. I believe that's the amount if you don't, you know, if you don't keep your area clean. And so the word kind of spread. So that, that is, there, is, is there anything within their, um, and I may be getting in the weeds here, but is there anything within their rental agreement that says they need to keep that clean? I yes. Mean, is, there, is there any inspection of the properties mm -hmm. for? We alcohol? charge. Okay. We charge uh, for that, and that is a part of the lease okay. that you have to, um, they have their tenant responsibilities. Right. We charge, they clean up. You remember I said we have some issues with mental yeah. illness? Yeah. Sometimes those are the residents who don't quite understand, right. and it's you know we, we try to bear with folks. We are, I tell people all the time we're in the pro we're in the habit of housing people. Right. We don't want to put people out yeah. if at all necessary, if at all possible. We don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. We can sure help with that. So. And I'm wondering if maybe we could help with just I know you've got lots of good education classes. Maybe we could have our you know our code guys go out maybe one of the Saturdays where you're doing something and, and you know just say hey guys this is what you know, we need to do as a community, and, and this is how you can help and, 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 and educate versus just cite people, you know, but help them to understand the importance of keeping their, their areas. Just let me point out, because a couple of them are real, real uh, yeah. particular, like uh, the one on the left, the hole in the fence, uh, by the playground, there's a, there's a pretty big hole where... I can't uh, uh, I'm sorry, I can't see it, and maybe just my glasses. Yeah, but. I have, let's see if I have another. Okay, uh, on the left, um, there's a pretty good is the fence down or is that just the sidewalk there? Yeah, there's a, there's a little gap in the fence. Because now sometimes we do leave gaps. 
I can't tell if the fence has actually been torn apart. So properties could go yes. in, in between properties? Yes. Is that acceptable? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and it may be one property. I'm thinking that looks like possibly, uh, I don't know if that's Old Omega Road or yes, that's Old Omega Road. It's Old Omega Road. And the, Peterson? The, the path yes. to come from Peterson's over to Old Omega Road. That's, that's, that's the, the fence. I, I, you, there was a fence there, and somehow <coughs> it, uh, it's gone. I mean, portion of it is gone uh, open. At one time, you, uh, you had this uh, raw line fence to go yes. between mm -hmm. there uh, before you get to the playground. There was a, but then after, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of years, it, uh, it became bigger and and it was probably a sidewalk mm -hmm. first, but now it's a driveway. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is it, it, it has expanded to a driveway. And, and my, my concern is safety. Yes. There's a lot of children yes. in, in, in Old Omega Road and Peterson yes. that perhaps do come through this same little path. Uh, in fact, going to school, if they miss mm -hmm. the bus, then they got to walk over to right. Matt Wilson. My concern is this, do, do well, you can tell us that we need to, to help you put this fence back or to stop the traffic, because uh, uh, we were over there and we and we saw a guy just drive through there. And, and which, which was, I, I know it was against the law, <laughs> but we just weren't able to, 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 to stop him. You know, but there are some people that drive through there if you could tell tell us if you need us to to put the fence back or help you give to help you finally get the fence put back for just for this council for safety concern. Okay, what we may be able to do is put some of those steel, I mean the Bottom. the barriers uh, okay. there to prevent it. It allow people to walk through, but, but it won't allow people to, to drive. drive. We, we, we have we have to wait a and the young fellow on a little motorbike. Just about got him, but he he's, he took off through this little area and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, sped off. So uh, it's just a maintenance thing. So if you could help us, just yes, keep your eye can, on that. That's yes, good. we can do that. And we talked about safety, um, get more of the appliances, but uh, some of the juncture boxes, making sure that you know for inspection. This is yes. um, on, uh, on Peterson side. So just making sure that you're looking at that's very really important. And when you talk about safety, if if we could ask from a planning standpoint. And I guess if we could all dial it back years ago, uh, at the end of a cul-de-sac and, and pushing through and making a, a, a big U so you could drive through because the cars, the way they park mm -hmm. is causing a, a, a traffic situation. Right. And I don't know if the board has taken that up. I don't know if that's a concern, but we had an incident just last week and, and when the officers trying to get in there, we had a fire once and the cars on both sides is causing some major issues for public safety. So that's one of the things that we certainly uh, want to address if we could. Is there any way uh, the issues that you've identified that either someone can either ride with me to identify those issues that you see? Uh, because some of them I, I just haven't, I haven't noticed and I drive through, but um, I just haven't noticed them. Yeah. But if you all can list out uh, the, some of the issues that you're having, we can most we could certainly address those. Yeah, we talked about the cameras uh, that, that's, that's been up there. I don't know if they've been functioning, so we'd be interested to observe. Now, those cameras at these, no. When we rehab that property, we had to uh, um, we had to take all the cameras offline, and they we were having problems with them anyway. They were it wasn't a good camera system at all, and so they are none of those none of those cameras work. Or they in fact they were all supposed to be taken down. Yeah, some more of the junk we could help with that potholes and, and some of the roads that are pretty pretty sizable we could certainly help with that and then you know if you look at the stuff that's code enforcement issue on the left and then mm -hmm. you know when you're talking about fire that i think that uh, that's the fire that's yeah. the fire damage you here hopefully right. that'll be down in the next couple of months okay because that's been what over it's been over a year it's been, it was january of 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it took we didn't get the check from the, the insurance company i believe until december of 2017. So the, the, the funds that you received from um, from HUD about the, you know, one, let's just say $1.7 million, so you take that and program improvements to the uh, properties? Is that yes. how you do that? Yes. 
That's what we put in the budget. Uh, and it's, it's all kinds of stuff. We have, um, of course, we have salaries. Maintenance is our biggest expense. We do about between 3,500 and 4,000 work orders per year on, uh, on our units. And so most of that money that we get from HUD goes toward work orders, um, air filters, paint, just anything that you would need to uh, turn over a unit or fix something, fix holes in the wall, sheetrock, that kind of cabinets, everything. Has there been any research on grants from, from HUD or from the federal level? Uh, there are no grants. We, there is uh, an emergency and safety grant, I think, out there, but they only give out 16, I think, per year, and it's 3,400 housing authorities. And so you have to decide, do you want to spend money trying to get a grant that only 16 people, 16 agencies get in the whole country? Because the, 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 it's very slim chance that you'll actually get it. Right. But other than that, other, we get capital fund and uh, subsidy. Though that's about the only thing that HUD has given out these days. We used to have, years and years ago, I've been doing this a long time, uh, what's called a drug elimination grant. And it was for safety measures uh, for public housing units, whether through police support or through changing the properties, construction. But that's been eliminated. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Safety. Is, is there a safety issue at Peterson? Probably, yes. Or is there something that we can do, or you know, because I hear that. Mm -hmm. I've heard, we do too. I've been hearing it for a while. What what can we do to increase patrols? That? Increase patrols. That's okay. Well, if, if we do that and and people get you know cited or we arrested or whatever, what's I guess, I guess there's an eviction process like you were talking mm -hmm. about before. Yes. Um, um, one, of the, if, one of the things that is hard for us to do is evict someone based on uh, resident reporting. We need police reports. We've got to have evidence um, in order to evict. We've got to have, um, because we take that straight to court. And if it's a violent crime, I uh, like. I think a young man got killed on our property earlier, uh, well, late last year, I believe. He wasn't a resident, and neither was the child that died was not a resident, and neither was the perpetrator. And so there is nobody to evict for that. There is nothing we can do about that one. But if if there is issues at a particular apartment, apartment, if they are, that apartment is identified, and we have a police report to go along with that, then we do take action. Uh, we have just a minute left. Mary, do you want to give an overview of the redevelopment plan on how this yeah, fits in? Yeah, we are. <coughs> and y'all, excuse me, I've got some kind of crud going on here. Um, the city of Tipton is extremely excited about our redevelopment plans. We, we, for lack of a better term, we're calling it the Matt Wilson redevelopment area. But, um, but we've identified a pretty significant part of our community that unfortunately has been ignored for some time. So we're looking at going in with, um, with new infrastructure, uh, going in and helping people to rehab properties, some infill development, removing significantly blighted properties. This was a partnership that I think we're uh, going to be working with not only neighborhoods, but our school system and many organizations to make this a successful venture. But this came through a letter that we received several years ago from our school system saying that the area around the Mount Wilson neighborhood was, was in dire need of attention. And when we really started to look at that, we agreed. And so, um, so we've really been evaluating our neighborhoods and our community um, to make sure that we're restoring neighborhoods, to make sure that we're, we're creating safe environments for families to live. And I was really glad that you talked about the family initiative because that's really a focus for us too. Safety is the number one priority for um, councilmen um, folk, and so we're always looking at safety aspects. So it's reaching out and being good partners with the, the various organizations within the community that can, one, how can we help you accomplish your goal and your mission, but then how can you help us accomplish ours? Because if we're creating safe neighborhoods, that builds a strong tax base. If we have a strong tax base, we have a good school system, we have a good school system, we'll have people that'll be working, and, and it just, it, it, it builds upon itself. So, uh, so we're looking to um, 
we're looking to you as, as members of our housing authority to help us accomplish that goal. Again, to, to reiterate what Councilman uh, Terrell and Councilman uh, Sales has, have both indicated, we want to be, you know, what can we do to help with that, whether it's dealing with issues of crime, with blight, with cleanliness, with programming with the, for the residents to help them. We'd love to educate and, and help rather than just, you know, slap them on the wrist. Let's explain why it's important that you keep your area clean and how it impacts your neighbors and, and uh, how collectively we can really make a big difference. So, uh, so we're very excited about this redevelopment in the neighborhoods that, uh, that I think we're going to make a big difference in. And working with the neighbors, you know, what is the, it's, it's not just us going and saying this is what your neighborhood needs to be. It's what is the history and the story of your particular street? What is it that you want to see and, and how can we help you accomplish that as, as city government? So, um, so that's kind of where we are. So okay. I think having this meeting today has been very beneficial. And, um, and again, we want to be good partners and good stewards. So thank you for what you're doing. I want to tell Councilman Terrell and I, we, we could follow up with Sandra and uh, we could go over some what, what we're seeing kind of a deeper explanation. Uh, if there's something that relates to the board, then certainly the board can take action and uh, we'll go from there. But fair enough. Any questions for us? No questions on behalf of the authority. Yeah. 